How's it going everyone? Make sure you check out thelasthodler.com to access the source code for this video absolutely for free. So without further ado, let's get onto the video. All right, what is up everybody? My name is The Last Hodler and I'm gonna be showing you today how to set up a secure login system on your PHP web server. And we're gonna be using something called the Panic PHP Login Minimal Login System, which is a really simple yet secure login system. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to install that and how to fix a security issue that it has, which would leave you open to SQL injection. Um, so you're gonna be learning about SQL injection as well and how to prevent against that. So I've got my Ubuntu VirtualBox open right now. I'm gonna be assuming that you're using Ubuntu for this or some kind of Linux distribution. Um, and we're gonna be doing this based on the LAMP stack. So that would require you to have Linux, um, Apache, MySQL, and PHP installed. So those are the prerequisites. If you don't have those, check out the link in the description because I have a link to how to set up the LAMP stack so that you can get up to speed and then do this tutorial. But without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to GitHub and we need to download all of the files that we're going to need for the PHP login minimal login system. So I've opened up a browser here and I'm going to go to github.com slash panic slash PHP login minimal. And then we're gonna be downloading those files and sticking those files into our web root. So once you're here at GitHub, click the clone or download button and sure, we'll download the, the zip version. All right, and let's open it with Archive Manager, sure. And that'll just unzip it for us. Cool, so once we have that, just grab that. And we'll just stick it on our desktop for now and we'll go from there. Or maybe we have to open it first. Oh no, it's there. All right, cool. Get rid of that. Okay, so now let's open up our terminal by pressing Control, Alt, and T all at the same time. And we're gonna start typing in some commands um, so that we can move this into our web route and start using this login system. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit as well so you can see what I'm doing as well. Maybe one more than that would be good. Yep, that looks about right. Okay, so let's just go to our desktop first. So type CD um, and then the tilde key slash desktop. Have a look what's in the desktop with LS. Okay, and we can see that we have PHP login minimal master here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move that to slash var slash www slash HTML. And that is our web root. That's where Apache is serving files from. It's where our website lives, let's say but we're gonna to need to do sudo at the start of that. So if you made that mistake, just type sudo and then two exclamation marks and it will run the previous command with sudo permissions and type in your password. And so now you can see there that that has moved. And so now we will move to our web root. And let's have a look what's in there with ls. Okay, so we've got everything we need and actually I don't need index.html and I don't need info.php. Uh, we need sudo for that. Okay, so what have we got in there now? So we're going to rename by typing mv and we're gonna rename that to just simply login. But obviously we need sudo permissions again. All right, so now we're good. We have our login. So I think we can actually access this now if we go to 127.0.0.1 slash login I'll tell you exactly why that worked, and it did work. Okay, so the thing with Apache is, when you type in something as a URL, what Apache does is it goes, okay, we're going into the login folder, but what I need to serve from the login folder is maybe an index.php or an index.html. It's looking for those two files, and it has an order of which, um, which is more important than the other. So if you have an index.html, it will serve that rather than a PHP. Uh, but if you don't have it, it will serve you the index.php. So it's looking for those files and it does that automatically. And you can actually change the order of preference of which file types it would serve over other ones first. But in our login, change to our login folder by going CD and then having a look what's inside there with LS, you can see that we have an index.php. So that is what um, our Apache server has served to us there. So let's have a look inside the index.php 
file and actually have a read and see what it's doing. So let's open that up in get it. I might not have installed get it yet, but if I haven't, I'll just install it. So let's see if we can open that with get it. And we can. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at this code and actually see what is going on here. So the first thing it does, it checks what version of PHP we're on. And if we're on a version of PHP that's less than 5.3.7, it says we're not going to run it on any versions less than that for security reasons. Um, and the next thing it does is it says if you're using PHP 5.3 or 5.4, you have to include the password API compatibility library. Okay, so that just means that we're going to be using some PHP native functions that don't come with this version. So we don't need to worry about that because we are using PHP 7. So the next thing it does is it, it requires config db.php. So let's have a look at what that is. That is the uh, basically like the password and the username for our database so that this thing can connect to our MySQL server. So let's have a look. We open another terminal and we're going to go into our web root cd slash var slash www slash html. And let's have a look in login and have a look in config and have a look in db.php. Okay, so it's opened with get it now. So what we need to do is we need to configure our MySQL to actually use these credentials. And, and this um, login system has come with a script to set up our MySQL to work like that. So let's have a look at where we are in the login folder. Um, and you can see we have another folder here called installation. And so that's going to be what we use to set up and configure our MySQL database to be correct for this login system. So let's go there, CD installation and have a look what's inside here. Okay, so we have one script called create database and we have one script called create and fill users table. So let's have a look at those one after another. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use cat for that. Cat will just print this stuff onto the screen. So as you can see here, the only thing inside this file is create database if not exists login. So it basically says, if there's no login database, we just create one. And the second thing is create and fill users table. So if the table login.users doesn't exist, it puts all of these fields into it like a primary key for user ID, we've got username, user password hash, user email, all this stuff. So this is just setting up the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to run these two scripts and then our MySQL database will be set up correctly to run our login system. So before we install this MySQL database, I'm going to suggest that you install something called PHP MyAdmin, which is a way to access your MySQL database with a graphical user interface. So it's just going to be a lot easier to see what's going on with your MySQL database if you have PHP MyAdmin installed. So I'm going to install it for this tutorial. I suggest you install it too, but it's not um, it's not uh, completely necessary. You can do it without PHP MyAdmin, but I'm going to use PHP MyAdmin. So you would type sudo apt get update. This is just going to update your apt package manager. And if you updated your app package manager when you installed PHP, you don't have to do it again. But if you haven't done it yet, it's just good practice. So after that is finished installing, we're going to actually install PHP MyAdmin with sudo apt get install PHP MyAdmin PHP mb string and php get text and click yes all right so now we're in the next screen and we need to attach php my admin to our apache server so we have to select apache 2 and click enter and it should continue installing Okay, so now we need to add two different PHP extensions to our PHP. And one of them is called mcrypt, which is for different encryption kinds of things. And the other one is called mbstring, which allows PHP to deal with non-ASCII encoded strings. So different kinds of string encodings. So the first one is mcrypt. So we need to type sudo php nmod mcrypt. And the second one is sudo php and mod mb string. Get rid of that D. Okay, so now that we've enabled those, we need to restart Apache. So you would type sudo systemctl restart Apache2. 
We start at patch E2. So now that we've successfully installed phpMyAdmin, we have to edit one configuration file so that we can access that. And to do so, um, just type get it slash etc slash apache2 slash apache2.conf. And actually we're gonna do that as a sudo so that we can edit it. So um, type sudo and then that command, but if you typed what I typed, you can type sudo space exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and that will just run the previous command with root permissions and put in your password. And then at the very bottom of this file, we're gonna add one line to allow us to access phpMyAdmin, and that line is include slash etc slash php my admin slash apache dot conf and hit control s to save that and then get rid of that and we should and actually we have to do one more thing we have to type sudo service apache2 restart then we'll be allowed in okay so now that that's done that we can go to 127.0.0.1 slash php my admin. All right, and we should be able to type root for the username and 123456 for the password or whatever password you used when you installed MySQL. Okay, and now we are in. So we need to import our .sql files um, to set up this database. Actually, I wonder if I can just drag and drop those straight in. So to get to them, I'm gonna type nautilus slash bar slash www slash html slash login slash underscore installation. And that should bring them up right here. So now that I'm in PHP my admin, I'm just gonna click SQL and I'm gonna open each one of these files individually and copy paste them in to this box to set up the database. So that has created our login database. You can see it here. And now I'm gonna open the next one and copy paste that one in next. All right, so now our database is completely set up. We have our login um, database, and inside that we have a table called users. And if we have a look at the structure of that, we can see all of the columns that we have in that table. So we have a user ID, a username, a user password hash, because we're not storing passwords on our backend. That would be bad security practice. We're, um, we're including password hashes instead. So the, when the hackers come and hack our database and hack our server, they're not gonna get any passwords in plain text, they're just gonna get uh, password hashes, which will be useless to them because they won't be able to unhash them. So that's how we keep our passwords secure. So now it's time to have a look at the code um, and have a look at exactly what's happening in our backend um, so that you can have an understanding of how our login system is actually working. So I'm gonna start by opening the classes and we have two classes here we have the login class and we have the registration class so let's have a look at the login class first okay so the first thing i want you to look at is something called dollar underscore post and i'm actually going to bring this up on our website as well so that we can have a look and what's going on and I can show you a few things about this login system that you should know. So when we go to login, we have this form and you type in your username and then you type in your password and you click login. And the type of form that it's using here is called a post form. And post is a way that your website can post information to other parts of the website and then deal with that information and then give a result. And if you look at the SQL, sorry, if you look at the HTML, when I bring up the inspector, 
it says this form here is a post form. So when we type our stuff in, our username, and we type in our password, and we hit login, this code is gonna get called, and we're dealing with the post username and post user password, which are those two things, and then it's gonna do a whole bunch of stuff to like verify that you're the correct user. So let's start at the very beginning and have a look at the first file that gets that gets opened when we go to our login um, URL. The first thing that happens is it goes to this index file here, and then it checks what version of PHP we're using, and then it um, gets our database configuration, so the database name, the database password, and it's gonna use that to connect to our MySQL database when it logs you in or when it registers a new person, that's what that file is for. And then it's gonna require the login class and execute all the stuff in that class. So once it's there, it's gonna go into this login file here, and it's gonna, and it's gonna attempt to do the login with the post data. That's the name of that function. And that's what that's doing. But let's have a look at the constructor because when this login class is initialized, this constructor function is what gets called first. So the, the first thing it looks at is, are we are we passing a parameter, a get parameter, and get is much like post, um, it's passed in a slightly different way, but all you need to know about this is it's saying, are we, are we post, are we, are we giving it another parameter which is called logout? And if we are, then we have to perform the logout function. But if we're posting login, which we are, it's actually part of this form up here. Let's have a look at the inspector again. We have a, a field in this form called here we go, login. The name of this field is login, and then it looks for that in this class, and it says, is it set? Well, yes it is, because it's gonna be sending it when we click login. Well, if that is the case, then we're gonna perform this function called do login with post data. So let's actually have a look at that function. Here it is, private function do login with post data. So the first thing it's gonna check is, do we have a username? Is the, is the username field, post username empty? Well, if it is, then the username field was empty, um, and that's gonna be that. If the password was empty, well, we're gonna have this error, the password field was empty. And if neither of them are empty, then we're gonna to try to perform the login. We're gonna come into this section. So the first thing to check is, is that empty? Is the username empty? Or is the password field empty? So if they're not, then we come into the next part of the code. Okay, so the first thing it does is it creates a connection to the database using these variables, dbhost, dbuser, dbpassword, and dbname. And those variables are stored in our db.php config file. So that's why we required this file originally. We required it back in the index page. What we did was we required that file, and then we started going into this class and performing all this class's stuff. So that's what those variables are actually referring to. So we make that connection to that database, and if there are no database errors, if we if we're sorry if we're if if we're using the UTF-8 character encoding, which we are, okay, then we can keep going. And if um, there are no errors in data uh, in connecting to the database, then we start trying to perform the login, and that is this next section here. So the first thing it does is um, it does some input sanitization to the post username and that's what real escape string does it sanitizes the input and once it sanitizes the input we can actually start um, making our sql statement here that's this dollar sql equals select username user email user password hash from users where username is this which is our post username you can see here that it, this variable here is our post username, but the sanitized version of our post username. And this is partly, the reason that we did this real escape string is partly to deal with MySQL in injection attacks, but we're not completely secure from MySQL injection attacks at the moment, uh, but we will be securing ourselves from that later. I just wanna explain this first, uh, but we will be securing against that. So that creates this uh, MySQL statement. And then this line here executes the query. So this database connection query will execute our our SQL statement and put the result of that execution into this result of login check variable. And then when we check, when we when we go further down the code, we're going to check this variable and base our result from um, how the success of our SQL query was executed, right? So if the result of the login check num rows is one, that means we've found a user whose username or user email 
is the username because actually this this username field here also accounts for the user email so you can either type in the username or the user email in this one place that's why it's username or user email and if that user exists then we're going to have a look at the password right so we're going to we're going to get the result from our database and we're going to do something called fetch object which converts the result from the database into an ob object like a php object that we can actually have a look at in the proper php way now that we've got our result row as an object we can use this arrow notation to have a look at different parts of that object. So we're going to pass. We're going to use the native PHP 5's password verify function to well to, to compare the user password by hashing it to the password hash in the back end of the database. And if password verify this function returns true, so like if this whole thing returns true, then we're going to write the username and the user email into our session information. And this session information is how PHP is able to keep the user logged in um, over multiple page refreshes, because it would be no good if we logged in and then we refresh the page and we have to log in again. So we have this thing called dollar session to maintain the user's session throughout when they're using our website. So once we've got to here, we are actually successfully logged in. So let me show you exactly what that looks like. But before I do that, let's go back to this index page. So that was this login class here. And actually, we initialized this login class here. We called our um, object $login, and it was a new instance of the class login, which is this class that we required here. And this returns, um, well, after this has completed, we have this login object with a parameter, which is, is the user logged in? And if that is true, then we go to the logged in view. And I'll give you a look at what the logged in view is. We have a couple of views in our views folder. We have the not logged in view, which is this one here that you can see up here. Um, but we also have the logged in view, which simply says something like you are logged in. Thank you for logging in. So let's try logging in and going to that view. Actually, before we do that, we actually have to make an account because we don't have an account yet. And I'll explain to you how the account creation also works in a moment, but let's just make one. So my username is going to be Oscar. And my email is oscar at oscar.com. And my password's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll repeat that one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's register. Okay. Oh, so before we can do that, actually, we have to change our configuration file to match our MySQL configuration, because right now we have the panic login system default configuration, but we configured our d database a bit different. We have a different password. So our login is still root, but our password is 123456. So let's change that to 123456, and then after that, it should work as expected. So let's type in Oscar, and my email is oscar at oscar.com, and 123456. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now it says your account has been created successfully and you can log in. So let's go back to the login page and actually try to log in. So it's Oscar, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so now you can see that it says, hey, Oscar, you're logged in. Try to, cl uh, to close this browser tab and open it again, still logged in. So that's talking about that sessions thing that I just mentioned to you. So what it did, and we'll just go back to the index page so that we can recap exactly what happened. We loaded up our database configuration, and then we loaded up the, the login class. We made a login object out of that login class, um, and in the constructor of that class, it automatically attempted to log us in while we made that. So we made that automatically attempted to log us in because we posted to this index page, right? We posted using our um, login form that was provided to us in the logged out view, okay? So once we performed that login, it checked if the login was successful and if it was, it provided us with the logged in view. And if it wasn't, then it gives us the you're not logged in view and displays the error message um, that is associated with the failure of not being able to log in. So for example, if I type in Oscar and I type in a, a wrong password, 654321, and then I click log in, it's gonna say wrong password, try again. And the reason for that is because inside the login code where it 
where it sort of tests the user password against the password hash saved in the database using this password verify function, which is a PHP password verification function. It's going to say, well, this, this failed, so we're going to come to this else, and we're going to say, this errors is wrong password, try again. So that's how the login system works. Let's go through the code for the registration system, and then I will show you how to protect this code against SQL injection, and it will be a fully secure login system that you can use on a production server if you want to. So we have two things. We have register.php, which much like our index.php, is where we go, where we originally go, to register, and that will be in control of the registration object, which is made by the registration, cl registration class inside our classes folder. So let's have a look at that. We have a few more um, inputs in our form this time, but much like the login logic, it's a post form again. So much like the login code, we have a constructor that checks if we've posted, and if we have, it attempts to make a new user. So when we type in all of our registration stuff into this form and we click, and we click go, it's going to post to this register.php file and it's going to initialize this class and it's going to say, have they posted this register parameter? And if they have, well, okay, we're going to attempt to register a new user. So let's have a look at this function. So the first thing it tests is whether we've actually included a username or we've included the two passwords or if we've not included um, the password repeat or if the password is the wrong size or if the username is too big and all of that stuff. This is all of all of the different checks to make sure that we're um, adding a valid username and a valid password because we only have a finite amount of space in our database. Actually, the longest username that we're allowed is 64 characters long. The minimum is two characters long. This is a regular expression which only allows us to have um, characters and numbers in our username. So no weird and wonderful characters, no emojis, nothing like that. Um, and it's saying that if we post anything weird and wonderful that isn't from A to Z, um, and the length is not between two and 64, then that's not valid and it does not fit the character, screen, uh, the character scheme on the A to Z with any case that you like and um, between two and 64 characters, but nothing outside of that. So no accented characters, nothing like that. What else here? We, we can't have an empty email. Uh, we can't have an email above 64 characters long. It has to actually be an email. So this filter validate email um, is a PHP native function. This filter var here is a PHP native function, and we can pass it this filter validate email string inside the function, and then it's going to check this post variable, our user email, and check if it is actually an email. And if it's not, then it's not a valid email, and we're not going to allow it. So this final else if here is just saying, if, it's, um, if our username isn't empty and our username is the right size and our username doesn't have any weird characters and the same goes for our email and that is valid and the same goes for our password and the password is valid, then we're going to attempt to connect to our database using those constants in our configuration file that we have required um, in the other file. If we're using um, the correct character encoding, which is UTF-8, um, then we're fine, we can continue. And if there was no connection error to the database, then we can actually start like registering this user, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do an escape string and stripping tags on our post variables. So that's like saying if the user tried to inject HTML tags and, and was trying to inject uh, malicious code into our system that way, well, they're not gonna be able to anymore because we're using strip tags. And we're also doing the string escape here to like filter and uh, do input sanitization on our post variables. So then we just set our post user password to another variable so it's more humanly readable, and we come down um, into PHP's native one-way hashing function. So the reason that we're not storing passwords in plain text on our database is for security reasons. Like if we get hacked, we don't want the hackers to be able to see our users' passwords, right? So what we do instead is whenever a user tries to log in, we hash their login attempt, like we hash the password that they tried to use to log in. And then we say, is that password hash the same password hash as we have in our database? And if it is, then it's very, 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 very unlikely that the password is wrong and they should be allowed to log in. So that is like the standard practice for password hashing and logging in. It's like an industry standard way to keep your login system secure. Um, and there are countless examples 
of um, websites and big companies, big websites that do store plain text passwords in their backend. And when they get hacked, they really do get caught with their pants down. So you really want to make sure that you're not storing passwords in plain text on your backend. And this solves that problem. So once we've done our password hashing, we're going to select from our database where the username is the same as the username that we posted or the, or the email because we can do username or email. And once we've checked whether there is one row, it says, sorry, we've already taken that username or email address, so you're gonna to have to choose another one. And if there isn't one row, then we're going to be able to create that account and register that user with this next statement, which is insert into users. We're gonna insert a username, a user password hash, and a user email. And the values are gonna be what was posted for the username, the user password hash, which we established a little bit higher up here with this PHP 5 native hashing algorithm. And we're also gonna add the user email. And then we're going to execute this query. And if the query was executed successfully, say that the account has been created. Otherwise, say, sorry, your registration failed. You'll have to try again. And back in the um, file that is publicly available that we're accessing through our web route on this actual website, you can see that just to recap, we're acquiring our database configuration, then we're including this registration class, then we're going to make a registration object, which is gonna automatically run through all of this stuff, check whether we've posted something, which we have using this form up here, and then if the um, registration is valid, it basically just prints to the screen, Thank you, for uh, thank you for registering, your account has been created successfully, and then you can click, go back to the login page, and um, log into your account. So the final thing that we want to do um, to all of this stuff is to secure it from uh, MySQL injection attacks because it actually is still vulnerable to MySQL injection attacks, which is really not good. Um, and we can solve that problem by instead of creating MySQL queries like this, we do something called a prepared statement. And that means um, it's, a, it's a lot more of a strict way of adding user supplied input into our MySQL statements without tricking PHP into executing code that it shouldn't actually be executing. So let's start by converting all of our stuff, all of our MySQL queries into prepared statements. And once we've done that, we'll have a fully fledged login system that's secure from MySQL injection. And it's secure when the hackers come along, break into your server and have a look in your backend. So the first place that we're gonna do this to, we've got two places where we need to protect against MySQL injection attacks, and that is in the login class and in the registration class. Basically anywhere that we're doing any MySQL queries, where there is user input involved, we wanna make sure that we're not allowing the user to um, add any malicious code. And that's exactly what prepared statements are for. It's a way more strict way of performing MySQL queries than uh, simply writing out a string, allowing the user to put their own stuff inside that string and then hitting the execute button. We don't wanna do that. We're gonna be doing um, prepared statements instead. All right, so in the login class, we only have one SQL statement that we need to um, protect from. So let's start by changing uh, this variable to say stmt, which means statement, and then that's gonna equal this uh, db connection prepare. And then we're gonna take our, our statement and we're gonna to have to change it slightly. And then every time we have user input, we have to change that to a question mark. And those are going to be our parameters. So now, let's see if I can get rid of this space as well. Okay, so now we have select username, user email, user password hash from users where username equals something or user email equals something. We can get rid of that as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bind parameters to this prepared statement so that um, PHP doesn't misinterpret um, that user input, which is gonna be our username or our user email, as um, code and then executes it and then our whole website gets hacked, right? So that's why we have prepared statements. So we're gonna say 
dollar stmt. Let's move this over a little bit. Yep. And then bind param. So the bind param function takes a couple of arguments. The first argument is what kind of variables are going to be in the statement. So we have a username and a user email, and they're both strings. They're both strings of characters. They're not numbers, they're not booleans, yes or no, they're strings. So we need two S's, one for each S is for string. And then we're gonna actually bind those parameters. Which parameters are we using? Well, the first one is dollar username, and the second one is dollar user email. And then we're going to say dollar stmt execute. So that's going to execute our statement. And then we're going to say, uh, actually, I don't need to put that there. Just get rid of that. Let's go all the way to here. Dollar result of login check equals dollar stmt arrow get result yep and then we're gonna have one more which is dollar num rows equals dollar result of login check arrow num rows and then we're going to get rid of this. And then we're going to change this variable here for num rows. Okay, so instead of executing um, that SQL in the old way, we're now making a prepared statement. And then we're going to bind some parameters to it, which are two strings, the username and the user email. And the first one the username is this one, this question mark here, and the user email is this question mark here. And once we've done that, we're gonna execute the statement, and then we're going to get the result of the statement, and we're gonna check how many rows it has in this next if statement here. So if it has one row, then we're going to um, get the result of our statement as an object, and we're gonna start um, having a look at the password, and if the password verify function completes and returns one, as in the user password and the password hash in the database match, um, then we're going to give the user um, the session with the username, the user email, and the logged in status of one. So let's have a look. Let's save that and have a look if it works. Maybe I made a mistake, but I don't think so. So let's type in my username and my password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And it says, hey, Oscar, you are logged in. Try to close this browser tab and open up again. Cool. So we are logged in. And you know what? I actually will do that. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to close this, close Firefox. Um, and maybe I'll open up a new tab, copy paste that back in, click enter, and see if we're still logged in. And we are, so that's cool. So we've done the login script now with the login class now. Now we have to do the registration class. And the registration class has two MySQL statements in it, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it has the select statement and it has the insert statement. So let's start with the select statement first. So we do that by typing $stmt. equals dollar db connection arrow prepare and inside here we're going to add our mysql statement make sure to put a semicolon on the end there and then we're going to change all of our variables that we're adding to the statement to question marks we can get rid of this semicolon as well. So now that we've done that, we can bind our parameters to it. We say dollar stmt bind 
up a RAM. And we have uh, two parameters again. And again, they're both strings. We have one for the username and we have one for the user email. And then we're going to say user name for the first one and user email for the second one. And then we're going to say, we're going to execute the statement. Okay, and then we're going to get the result of that, of that execution. And then we're going to say num num rows actually i think we this might need to be a this because we're dealing with yes that is right so we need to where are we we need to go back to registration we need to say this db connection because this is an instantiation of the registration class so we need to be talking about this object after we instantiate it so it's this database database connection not just database connection so let's go back down to num rows equals dollar result num rows all right so now we can check and get rid of all this stuff. And now we can check dollar num rows and see if this user already exists. If they do, then sorry, that username or email already exists. We can't register them again. Otherwise, we're going to insert the new user into the database. So we need to create a prepared statement for that as well. So let's do that, dollar stmt. Let's call this one statement two, stmt2. Oh, that's annoying. Let's do some spaces to line it up. All right, equals dollar db connection, prepare. And this is gonna be this insert statement here. All right. So insert into users, the username, the user password hash, the user email, and the values are gonna be one question mark, two question marks, three question marks, one for each of the variables, one of the, for each of the parameters that we're gonna be attaching to this MySQL statement. And I really like my code to be nicely lined up. So I click uh, space a few times. So now we're gonna bind our params with the bind param function. And again, these are all strings. And so the first one is going to be dollar username. The next one is gonna be dollar um, user password hash, which is this one up here. I'm just gonna copy paste that one so I don't spell it wrong. And then user email. And then we're gonna say, Say statement to execute. And actually we're gonna say, we're gonna save that into a variable called success. And now we can get rid of all of this and we can test that success variable in the same place as we were uh, testing the old variable here. And if the statement was successful, um, and let's just say equals true, but you could just do dollar success um, by itself, but that's a little bit more readable to say equals true. If the success is true, then the account was created successfully and you can log in. Otherwise, sorry, the registration failed. Please go back and try again. So let's save that. Just before we run that code, I realize here that I've made a slight mistake. This needs to be dollar this DB connection as well, because we are using object oriented programming and this is an instantiation of the class. Therefore we have to be referring to this object. 
So now that we've done that, we can type in a username. The username can be uh, Oscar123. The user email can be Oscar123 at gmail.com. Password can be 123456, 123456. And let's hit register. And it says your account has been created successfully. You can now log in. So that has been how to create a login system in PHP that is actually secure. And in the next video, we can attach a nice front end to this login system, make it look really pretty using Bootstrap. And it will also be an introduction to how to use Bootstrap to create beautiful front ends without having the ugliness and complexity of pure CSS. Um, it's a much nicer way, especially for beginners, to um, write beautiful, um, lovely front ends without getting bogged down in CSS and that kind of thing. It also lends itself very well to JavaScript and jQuery, which are industry standard um, uh, well, JavaScript is an industry standard computer programming language, and jQuery is a framework based on JavaScript um, that you'll see a lot of the time if you are a web developer, so they're good things to know as well. So thank you. Make sure you subscribe if you want to learn everything there is to know about being a web developer, and I'll teach you all of the industry standard practices and things that you need to know to be infinitely employable as a web developer. So make sure you subscribe to that, and check out my website um, for a tutorial guide on how to be infinitely employable and get that developer job of your dreams. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.